Hello there, I'm Nigel Griffiths. I work in Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. I've been working with Mike Pearson on this video. This is all about taking a first look at the Power 9 Open Power Model LC922. Let me explain the name first of all. It's either Linux Cluster or Linux Cloud, depending on what you want to do. The 9 is for Power 9, the first two is for two sockets, and the second two is for 2U high in a 19 inch rack. There is a smaller machine in the same range, the LC921, and as you guess, it's 1U high. Of course, that means there's less disk can go in the front, there's less air supply going through it, so it runs at a slightly lower gigahertz. has the same amount of memory and nearly the same number of adapters. This movie is very much about the LC922, though. Here's my machine sitting on a table. With the cover taken off, you can see the Power 9 is underneath those two black covers. It's the slim core version of that processor. One of the two sockets, that's up to 44 CPU cores in this machine. The nominal gigahertz is around 3 gigahertz, but then there's overclocking on top of that. The 44 CPU cores have SMT4, so that's simultaneous money threading very strong threading technology, particularly with the Power 9 processors, that allows us to run up to 176 concurrent programs at the same time every instruction cycle. On the memory side of things, we have up to 16 DDR4 DIMMs. That gets us up to 2 terabytes if you take the larger DIMMs. And as you can see, there's four different sizes in the range. At the back, we have two hot plug power supplies. And down the middle of the machine, we have four large fans. At the back, there's six PCIe Gen 4 adapter slots. At the front, you probably worked this out already, but we have 12 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch discs, or SSDs can fit in those bays. Somebody worked out that's a maximum of 120 terabytes. Four of the bays can be used for NVMe if you want to use that new advanced and very fast disk technology. Of course you could put a fiber channel adapter in the back and talk to out to your sand disks if you need more disk space than that. Hot plugs, the other disks in the front of course you're hopefully not taking out the disk you're actually using and the power supplies at the back. Now nothing underneath that top lid is hot pluggable you have to power it off and take it out of the rack and put it onto a bench to make changes that includes the fans the cpus of course the memory and the adapters the operating systems are ubuntu 1804 lts that came out with nice timing just before the machine and the red hat 7.5 both supporting the power 9 processor I think SUSE SLES should work fine as well, and the non-enterprise class versions of Linux too, but uh, you're on your own if you do that. These two will also run the native KVM to give you virtualization. Now, I've just finished making some videos about the S922 and S924. If you like, they're in the classic uh, scale-out and enterprise-type machines from IBM using the Power9 processor. A few differences there immediately spring to mind. This machine won't run AIX or IBM I. It doesn't run the PowerVM uh, hypervisor. We're using KVM here for the hypervisor technology, and so it doesn't support the virtual I.O. server. It does have a service processor, it's called a BMC, and if you're used to that, you know that you can start and stop the machine and that sort of thing in here. Um, and I was going to say that uh, we can't support this machine via a HMC, but that's not true. They're actually providing that service as some basic capabilities of starting and stopping the machine and getting status and things like that. I'm looking forward to giving that a try. Well, that's enough slides about the machine. Let's actually go and have a look at one. We'll see it in the rack, then we'll take it onto the table and take various things out of it and have a look around. Welcome to my computer room line of T42 racks. Unfortunately they're round hole racks and these machines will only fit into square hold racks. We're using the 11U mini rack at the end. Oh look you can see N1 running in the screen there. I'll open it up and show you two Power 8 servers at the top, the S821LC and the S822LC. And there's the new Power 9 machine, the LC922. We can tell because it still has the plastic on the little handles. If we zoom in now we can see the disks and here's a little plastic strip you can pull out that has the machine type model and the serial number on it. We can then push it back in. It's not actually on the outside of the machine. Now around to the back, the lower of these two servers is the LC922. On the left the two power supplies and the cables. A fibre channel over here, VGA to a screen and a USB keyboard. I just pulled that out to make things clearer. On the right we have the BMC to the service processor and this is the first Ethernet port as seen by the Linux operating system. 
Back around the front of the machine, we've taken the door off. We're going to slide the server out of the rack. And it comes, and Mike's going to point out that you can't lift the lid of the top because it's still underneath the server above. We have to lift it out of the rack. So this is a two-man lift. You release the little catches, slide it out, and the outer rail comes with the server. It's connected to the side of the server itself. There's two tiny little grub screws that are very easy to lose in the computer room. You can spend hours trying to find them again. Mike's taking the second one out. Then you push down the little buttons, push the lid back a centimetre and lift it up. And you can see the insides. Mike's going to pop out a disc unit, very simple mechanism. This holds the 3 inch disc or 2.5 inch discs. So we've got the 2.5 inch SSDs. Zooming in a bit, Mike will pop the disc back in and we can also see some of the buttons and LEDs on this left hand corner. This is the on off button and LED and there's six little indicators below. Mike's going to take off these air baffles that make sure the air from the fans goes through the heat sink and cools the processes. He's now going to quickly take out uh, one of the fans, quite a nicely made unit. Slides in and goes back in with a nice firm clunk. Here we are around the back, nice and tidy piece of engineering. Two power supplies that Mike's pointing out. He's going to tug one out. You move the little brown catch over and then give it a tug out. It's a good snug fit. So here's the fairly standard unit. I think Super Mike used the same power supplies in other machines they provide. And he goes back in the same way. It's a good, uh, good push to get it back in. You don't want power supplies flopping about. Now here's the back of the machine. Point out a few adapters, the four port built in 10 gigabit Ethernet, two USB 3s, the BMC service processor Ethernet and a serial port, then the VGA screen port. Above that there's a four port Ethernet optional adapter, PCIe, and then a two port fiber channel again adapter. Now excuse me while I move the camera around to the corner of the machine. We're going to take the adapter cage out, so Mike's going to undo a little screw at the far end. And he's going to flip over the little lug handle that uh, frees up this end of the cage. And then uh, gently lifts it up, straight up. I'm going to flip over the adapter just so you can see some of the details. We'll just give you a little view of the CPU heat sinks and the memory there. I just want to show you little tips about the installation. We put the rails in the rack here, but this outer part of the rail will slide out. We need to attach that to the side of the server. And the left hand rail now. You see there's a release catch here. The square holes have to match up with the lugs on the side of the server. We'll just put them up, they'll slide over the top, and then you have to slide it slightly forwards. This is a metal spring clip in here that locks it on, and finally a locking screw. Now we're ready to slide this part of the rail into the part that's in the rack itself. So that's our first look at the LC922. One little point though, that the price of these machines is quite drastically lower than the scale-out and enterprise models from IBM. I recommend you ask your local IBM representative to give you a price quote. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. If you want more of these sorts of videos, give us a thumbs up. Comments are always useful. You can find my other 150 videos on my YouTube channel down below, and particularly the videos on the S922 and S924.